Good afternoon, Rotarians and guests. Welcome to the Rotary Club of Toledo. Today we'll present another great meeting and program with Adam Cassie with Keep Toledo Lucas County Beautiful. Contrary to rumors, we are not up here to do a musical number today. There is a reason that we are dressed the way we are, and you'll be hearing about that soon. Um, this time, I'd like to ask Travis Tangeman to come to the podium to deliver a reflection, followed by Maria White leading us in the Pledge of Allegiance. And then if you'll remain standing after that, we'll have past President George Eistetter lead us in the Rotary four-way test. Good afternoon, everybody. Good. <laughs> uh, my high school English teacher taught us never to start off a paper or speech with a, a, di pardon me, a dictionary definition or quotation. <coughs> Unfortunately, I was absent on the day he gave that instruction, and then I turned in my paper. I didn't particularly care for that teacher, uh, so let me start today's reflection with these words. According to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, the definition of patience is the, capability, or the capacity to accept or tolerate delay, trouble, or suffering without getting angry or upset. Now for full context, I need to share that my father was a self-made man who worked tirelessly to bring himself from humble beginnings to a nice level of success. And in his office hung a fairly crude painting of two vultures perched on a limb with one seemingly looking at the other. Underneath the following words are printed. Patience my ass, I'm going to kill something. <laughs> See, to my dad, this was a battle cry of sorts, to never rest on your laurels or to wait for something to come to you. If you want to eat, then you need to go make your dinner, so to speak. And I have lived the vast majority of my life trying to live up to those words. But it's interesting. In the world we live in now, one of 24-hour news and single-sentence tweets that act as official statements, I have found myself reflecting on the word patience. Yes, in my business and in many of yours, we should all strive to live up to my dad's personal credo. Don't wait, go get it. But perhaps what is lacking most in our present day lives is of constant informational bombardment is, wait for it, patience. So many of us, myself included, seem to have our temperatures raised and lowered so easily anymore without even knowing details, circumstances, or even the truth. Just because a single headline says something happened or a talking head on TV gives you their opinion or a person on social media shares a breaking news piece doesn't mean it's gospel. <laughs> Breathe, reflect, and if need be, research. But most importantly, use your capacity to accept or tolerate suffering without getting angry or upset until you have the details. And finally, my English teacher also taught us never to end with a definition or quotation. So for him, I conclude with these famous words by Herbert J. Taylor. Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? And will it be beneficial to all concerned? I pledge to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now please remain standing as past president George leads us in the four-way test. Will you lock that guy up, please? <laughs> it's kind of a segue. First, is it the truth? Is, is it, it the truth? truth? Second, is it fair to all concerned? Is it, is it fair, fair to all concerned? Third, will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? And fourth, will it be beneficial to all concerned? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Travis, Maria, and George. As we begin our meeting today, I would like to thank this month's sponsor, Raymond. And now greeter Donna Bogan will introduce today's visiting Rotarians. President Dick, we have one visiting Rotarian today. Visiting Rotarians, please stand as I read your name and remain standing until President Dick welcomes you. We have with us today Ken Robinson from the Perrysburg Club. President Dick, this is our visiting Rotarian. Welcome, Ken. Always great to have you here. Good to see you. 
Does anyone have any other guests today that they would like to share with us? If so, please go to the floor mic and introduce them there. Uh, President Dick, uh, my guest today is Nikki Hockenberry. She is the care coordination manager at St. Charles and my colleague, and she's a potential member. Welcome, Nikki. It's nice to have you here. President Dick, I have with me today Jason Barchi. He's with Fifth Third Bank out of the Lambertville office. Jason, great to see you today. Glad you're here. Now would be a great time to check into social media to let everyone know you were at the Rotary Club of Toledo Monday meeting. And then I ask that you please silence your phones for the rest of today's meeting so we can all have the full enjoyment of the gift of Rotary. You have heard me talk a lot about the Toledo Rotary Club Foundation, and I want to distinguish today between the regular grants we give on an annual basis in three cycles and those uh, targeted for transformational projects. Each year, our club gives away approximately $200,000 to local charities who make grant requests for up to $10,000 and they're very important to those charities. They are for things like a, a van for uh, an entity that provides dental services, mobile dental services to the community, or maybe new mattresses for a homeless shelter, those types of needs which are very real in our community. Those are our traditional grants. But beyond that, over the years, we have looked to do bigger things, transformational projects. And those are projects that have a substantial long-term impact for a number of people, as many people as possible. We want to affect great populations. Examples would be the Middle Grounds Metro Park, which was a centennial project, but we donated $300,000, and we have the Rotary Roundhouse there, and obviously that park will impact thousands and thousands of Toledoans and visitors for many years to come. Another example would be uh, the pending water project in Honduras, which will one day provide clean water for thousands of Hondurans who otherwise would not have clean water. Through our community conversations last year and through committee chairs and board discussions and our club assembly in November, we have vetted several projects, potential transformational projects, and ultimately, the board will determine which of those projects to present to our club as a whole for our members to approve. We hope to do that within the next couple of months. I will let you know that those potential projects that we are considering are the following. The promotion and advocacy of universal pre-kindergarten in this community, uh, sponsored by the Youth Services Committee inner city peace advocacy and the eradication of violence within the inner city, sponsored by the Peace Committee. Lead abatement, which is a huge problem in our community, both lead paint, lead in pipes, looking to advocate, bring people together for solutions to alleviate lead abatement. The Community Service Committee is sponsoring that project, potential project. As you all know, we've been big proponents of a clean Lake Erie, getting the word out, getting awareness out about Lake Erie. So water advocacy, continuing our goal of promoting water advocacy, bringing people together to make Lake Erie the best it can be, is a project promoted through the Water Committee. And finally, the potential for a downtown bike trail in connection with the Metro Parks downtown is being advocated by the International Service Committee. To do transformational projects, we need separate funding. We have to be able to raise funds for those transformational projects. We've done it in the past, and we're going to continue to do it into the future. At this time, I would like to introduce Rotarian Walt Churchill, the honorary chair of our upcoming transformational benefit and he's going to explain a little bit more about that and why he supports transformational projects. Walt. Thank you, Dick. 
The big cheese, the big wheel, the real deal. That's what they said to me uh, when I was asked to serve as honorary chairman of this year's annual fundraiser, supporting our foundation's transformational project. How could I say no to that? Ha, well, I didn't say no to that. <laughs> so I'm in. Okay, I've been a member of this club since 1958, and I'm proud to say that I'm one of 12 Toledo Rotarians with perfect attendance. That's 61 years. I'm glad, I'm told I'm the second longest member of the club with Clinton Mock in the lead by four years. And I see Honorary Dick Anderson out there. I got him one year, he's just one year behind me. But anyhow, all kidding aside, I'm honored to serve as Honorary Chairman of our fifth, uh, June the 15th fundraiser. The Toledo Rotary Black Tie Affair will all net proceeds going to directly to our transformational project fund. And one or all of the five transformational projects President Dick just introduced. As an individual and as president owner of Walt Church's Markets, we have supported our foundation's annual fundraiser each year and every year with wine, with full-scale gourmet meals, or someone's in someone's home or a unique live auction and more. Kathy never misses an opportunity to invite me. <laughs> <laughs> I've got it right now, right now near here. And this year will be no different, especially since I'm honorary chairman. Our club's history and our club's culture has always been directed at un undertaking and implementing great change. Glendale Fieldbach, it may be interesting to somebody, but anyhow, we used to buy gro groceries from the Fieldbach company. The Ability Center, Partners in Education, Middle Grounds Metro Park, undertaking efforts to clean up Lake Erie, Lake Erie, you know, has 70% of all the fish in the Great Lakes. Addressing the education of children before they go to school, and now we have five big ideas President Dick has just uh, walked us through. As honorary chairman, I'm encouraged to invite you all to join in the fun. Attend the events June the 15th, supporting the event financially, bringing your friends and family, and really, showcasing the story of Rotary and what it's all about. Don't forget we've got five different ones to choose from, one or all. And I thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Walt. We're excited to have you as honorary chair of this year's event. At this time, I'd like to introduce Rotarian Dan Murtaugh, who's going to introduce new member Jim Barron. Thank you, President Dick. Jim uh, is a lifelong friend of mine. He's a lifelong resident of Toledo. After graduation from Sylvania High School, he attended the Ohio State University where he earned bachelor's and master's degrees in finance. When he returned to Toledo, he entered the University of Toledo College of Law. Following graduation, he spent 14 years at the law firm of Fuller and Henry. <clears throat> in 1992, he joined the legal department at Owens, Illinois. In his 25-year career there, he held various positions, including director of finance, head of strategic planning, and general counsel. Jim has served on many community boards and is currently a member of the board of Owens College, a community college foundation, and a trustee of Owens, Illinois Charity Foundation. So now I'd like to tell you an interesting story about Jim. It was when he was attending Ohio State. He was a member of the swim team and Ohio State was hosting Indiana University. It was in the natatorium down there that Jim was about to take the blocks to swim the 100-yard freestyle, a race that would take less than a minute. And he looked to the lane next to him, 
and about to take the blocks was Mark Spitz. <laughs> now you remember Mark Spitz. His picture was on Sports Illustrated. He had seven gold, Olympic gold medals. So when the race took off and it finally finished, Jim did something that not many people in this world have ever done. He beat Mark Spitz and led the Ohio State Buckeyes to a victory. So behind this mild-mannered, <laughs> calm physique is a fierce competitor. So Jim has a lovely wife, Judy, and a beautiful daughter, Lindsay. So please help me welcome Jim by giving him a warm rotary welcome. Next, I'd like to invite Greg Guzman to the podium to introduce new member Lisa Wagner. Thanks, President Dick. Uh, fellow Rotarians, I'm pleased to introduce a dear friend of mine, Lisa Wagner, to the finest Rotary Club in the world. As a lifelong resident of Toledo, Lisa is a graduate of Central Catholic High School and the University of Toledo, go Irish, um, where she completed a business degree in finance. Following graduation, she joined the Toledo Lucas County Port Authority, where she held several titles, including Director of Financing Programs in charge of bond, state, federal loan issuance programs. Following her work at the port, she continued her efforts to advance economic development here in Northwest Ohio with Jobs Ohio. After 17 years in civil service, she moved over to the private side of development. Currently, Lisa is an assistant vice president and commercial lender with Monroe Bank and Trust. As I'd also like to say during my introductions, we're not just what we do, but why we do it. Lisa is an amazing mother to three children, Tyler, 25, Josie, 16, and Bryce, 13. Please give, help me give Lisa a warm rotary welcome. Always great to welcome two new members. We're glad to have you with us. At this time, I'd like to invite Rotarian Tom Winooski to the podium to introduce today's speaker. Thanks, President Dick, fellow Rotarians. I'll keep the introduction short. I don't want to be late for prom. <laughs> Our speaker today uh, cleans up pretty well. When he graduated from Defiance College in 2004, his first job was working as a park ranger at Yellowstone National Park, where his hair was shoulder length and his beard was chest length, almost like Mark Jacobs. I saw you there, Mark, that's why. Adam Cassie is the executive director of Keep Toledo Lucas County Beautiful. Adam has a degree in restoration ecology from Defiance College. Throughout his career, he has overseen multiple environmental education facilities and retreat centers. So, as executive director, he works with the city and the county on recycling education and litter programs, primarily from a prevention standpoint, trying to keep as much out of the landfill as we possibly can. Additionally, Adam's background also includes facilitating team building and leadership workshops for youth, college students, and adult as well as corporate groups. Please welcome our speaker today, Adam Cassie. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, President Dick, and thank all of you for having me here today. Who here recycles at home? I should see lots and lots of hands up. Recycling at home is easy. Who recycles at work? Uh, it's a little bit tougher to recycle at work. You're stuck with whatever they're recycling. Paper is easy, but beyond that, it's often a little bit more difficult. Who here 
has heard of Keep Toledo, Lucas County Beautiful? Mm, not as many hands as I would like on that one. Not as many hands. We are just a small nonprofit, but we have been in the community for over 35 years, serving our mission of creating greener communities through environmental education, litter prevention, and voluntary stewardship. I've been with the organization for about a month. <laughs> Nothing like giving this presentation for the first time <laughs> to a large group of important people. But when I was presented with the opportunity to give this presentation, I thought it was important to do so. Recycling is important. Recycling uses fewer natural resources, wood, water, minerals, than creating new materials. Recycling means less waste, cutting down on our use, our, our use of landfills. And a commitment to recycling reduces litter. Therefore, less trash ends up in our streams, lakes, rivers, and oceans. Extracting and processing raw materials causes greenhouse, grease, greenhouse emissions. Recycling reduces this pollutant. And recycling is a growing industry, creating jobs throughout the country. So what is the problem? Why am I here? Well, we found the question isn't, why isn't everyone recycling? The more important question is, why isn't everyone recycling, recycling correctly? And for that, we need to go back to the beginning. In the beginning, recycling was hard. I remember myself as a starry-eyed child getting my parents to recycle. Us and other families like us were ready to put in the effort. And in our garages, we set up the three-bin system. One for paper and cardboard, one for plastic, one for cans. The bins were not big. We had to compact everything before we put them in there. They didn't have lids. Everything was meticulously cleaned. This is not how recycling happens for most people anymore. Gone are our clean and organized bins, and in their place, basically a recycling dumpster. It's huge. We don't have to compact things and break them down. It's got a lid. We don't even have to clean things. We can throw what we want in there and not think twice about it. Still confident, though, that we're doing our part to save the world. And this is where we've run into some problems. Problems in the form of recycling contamination. Plastic bags now clog up our recycling machinery. Food, liquids, oils contaminate our paper and our cardboard, preventing them from being recycled. And things that are not recyclable are mixed in, slowing the process of recycling. Recycling is a business. It needs to make money. Slow that process too much with too many contaminants and entire truckloads of recyclables are sent to the landfill. Even minor contamination has caused the recycling industry as a whole to become more expensive with less actual output of recycled products. Here in Toledo, we are part of the problem. In 2010, the city of Toledo rolled out a single stream recycling program to over 950,000 residents. Also, Recycling in trash went to a private contractor. This changed recycling habits for a lot of people in the city. They were used to unlimited pickup. They could just sticker anything they wanted to get recycled. Private contractor delivered totes throughout the entire city and everyone thought things would be great. This was not the case. Bulk pickups of trash went from one free bulk pickup every quarter for every resident to one every single month to try to fix the problem. All a resident needs to do is call in and a bulk pickup can happen for free. Recycling does get picked up only every other week, so calendars were sent out, reminding everyone when their recycling would be picked up. On the calendar, it even tells you what is recyclable. Still, lots of contamination. The national goal for contamination is 10% or less. 
we were at 44%. 44%. Of our 22,000 tons of recyclables getting picked up, 37% was ending up in the landfill. And where once our recyclables had a value to them, they were costing the city $1.5 million to get rid of. This was a bit of a wake-up call for everyone. In fact, our, our processor called up at one point and said, we are no longer going to take your recyclables. They are just too contaminated. So important people got together from the city, the county, other stakeholders, and a plan was made. Inspectors were hired, and they would go around and inspect recycling totes. They would pass out oops cards. Has anybody seen one of these hanging on your door or your recycling tote? On one side, it's got a list of common contaminants. The inspectors would mark what they found in your recycling tote that should not be there. And this would go on the tote or on the door. On the other side, there's a list of things that should be in a recycling tote, just for reference. The first go around, 15,000 totes were inspected. 10,000 oops cards were passed out. They were just inspecting the top. They weren't rummaging through. Only 5,000 people were doing it right. The biggest contaminants were found. Yard waste, plastic bags, clothing, and food waste. Lots of other things were found as well. Large plastic toys that could not be recycled, hazardous waste like paints and oils, electronics. People try to recycle large electronics, TVs, small electronics, cell phones, coffee makers. Construction debris, tile, carpet, diapers. Thank you, residents out there who tried to recycle their diapers. <laughs> Hoses, shoes, styrofoam, a lot more. So our efforts continue. Inspections have happened two more times. As inspectors go around, they are now passing out these bumper stickers. They go on the recycling tote, again, listing what should be in there. Totes were delivered at different times from a couple different places. They're not all consistent. This gets everybody consistent. In 2017, we found a decrease in contamination by about 10%. 2018 inspections, they're still being calculated, but the city and the county are optimistic that we'll see additional improvement. But we're still a long way off from that 10% or less contamination. To continue the positive momentum that we have seen, I do need everyone's help. And here's what you need to do. Do not try to recycle electronics at the curbside or at a drop-off location. Take them to an electronics recycler. There are a number around town. Do not try to recycle hazardous waste. It is hazardous waste. Oil, paint cannot go in the curb. Call up the solid waste department for the county and make an appointment with them. You can deliver household hazardous waste at their location. Do recycle all glass and metal jars, cans, and bottles. Just make sure, clean it out a little bit, shake it off, get it dry, put the lids back on. If it's a soup can, put the lid inside of it. Then it is ready to be put in your recycling. Do not recycle food waste. This is compostable, not recyclable. Actually, composting is something that Keep Toledo Lucas County Beautiful is looking more into doing. If you want to find out more for your business or your household, give me a call. We can talk more about composting. Recycle all your paper and your cardboard. Just make sure that it is not contaminated with food, liquids, or oils. This means no pizza boxes. If it's clean on the top, if the lid is clean, you can recycle that. Rip it off, put that in the recycling, put the bottom in the trash. 
Most pizza boxes are actually perforated, so you can do this easily. Do not recycle yard waste. Grass, leaves, sticks. The city does do a leaf pickup. You can just rake it all to the curb or leave it on your lawn and mow it in. That's actually helpful and healthy for your, your yard. There's also a number of places around town where you can drop off yard waste. Recycle plastic with the lids on. A single lid from a water bottle is too small to be sorted at the processing facility. It's considered a contaminant. A lid on a water bottle can be recycled. Also, plastics are a little bit tough. Not all recyclers take all types of plastic. On any plastic, you're going to find the little arrow symbols. It's going to have a number in it, one through seven. The major recyclers in our area will take all the numbers except for three and six. Find that little symbol. If it's a three or a six, put it in the trash. Anything else, you can recycle. If you cannot find the symbol, don't recycle it. Err on the side of caution. It's better to throw it in the trash and send it to the landfill than contaminating your entire bin of recyclables. And no plastic bags. This includes recyclables in a plastic bag. If you bag your recyclables, take it to your recycling tote and empty it out. Your recyclables have to be loose so that they can be sorted properly. Keep that plastic bag, bundle it up, collect it with all your other plastic bags. Take it to your local Churchill's or Kroger's or any other grocery store where they collect bags. Interestingly enough, they do also take other plastic that is very similar in these locations. The plastic around toilet paper rolls or paper towels, dry cleaning, plastic bags, produce bags, bread bags, pack it all up, take it to that same location at your grocery store. Recycle all of your cartons. There's a theme going here. Clean, dry, lids on. Do not try to recycle textiles, clothing, curbside, or at a drop-off location. Again, though, these are actually recyclable. The thing to do with them is donate them. Send them to Goodwill, Salvation Army, even if they're unwearable. These organizations will sell them to a textile recycler and they will get recycled. <laughs> Lastly, no illegal dumping. This is what we see more at our drop-off locations where people try to leave large appliances, construction debris, wood pallets, carpet rolls. Leaving them in those locations is illegal. I brought a number of things with me. I left them on the table out front. I brought, came here to educate all of you. I'll leave you with lots of educational material. If your tote at home does not have an updated sticker on it, feel free to take this. Put it on your recycling tote. That way you know what goes in. I brought oops cards. I did not bring the ones with the door handles. I don't recommend taking them and anonymously leaving on them on your, your neighbor's doors. But there's a smaller version that you can pass out appropriately. Keep Toledo Lucas County Beautiful does a lot of school programming. If you have any young ones at home, I brought some coloring books. They've got our mascot on it, Riley. It's a puppet as well. Uh, educates our youth on reusing, reducing, and recycling. Feel free to take that home. There's also pencils out there made out of recycling, recycled currency. But before I end and take any questions, my story started out with me as a young person thinking that recycling was going to save the world. It is a bit more, a bit more complicated than that. But getting trash where it needs to be and getting recyclables, the correct recyclables, where they need to be would be a big step forward in creating a sustainable future. As I mentioned, I've only been with the organization for about a month. 
but I'm excited for the challenge of growing our reach, expanding our impact, and creating new partnerships. Our mission is to help Toledo do its best to reach that 10% goal. As I mentioned, we do educational programming. Presentations similar to this one, but also in the schools with summer camp programs. We assist with large litter cleanups. We coordinate recycling events for people to recycle hard to recycle items, tires, electronics, paint, textiles. We also coordinate with large events to help with trash and litter logistics. But most importantly, we are here to provide the tools and resources to help people recycle correctly. So if ever you have a question, or if you'd like to support our mission in any other way, give me a call, follow us on Facebook, visit our website. Does anybody have any questions? Yes, I have uh, two questions. Number one, uh, why cannot we recycle plastic bags? And two, uh, I understand that there's a uh, world uh, change in, in the marketability of recycled products with uh, the number one uh, purchaser of the of recycled products being, I believe, China has, is now deciding that they don't want them. Thank you. Sure. And that, I believe the first question was, why can we not recycle plastic bags? And again, we can. Definitely we can. We encourage you to do so. The problem is when those plastic bags go to the sorting facility, the sorting facility is automatic. It's machinery that is sorting those things. And the way that that happens, plastic bags just, just clog up the system. Things need to be shut down and actually ripped out of there. It it's, slows the process, but it's actually caused some, some danger for the actual workers uh, that are working those, those facilities. So they need to be kept out of there. It's just the same thing as the small caps. They can't be sorted properly. They are recyclable, so they need to be caps on. Same thing with clothing. Not that the textiles get recycled in the same locations, but if they were in there, they would still clog up the system. So it, it really comes down to what can be efficiently and cost-effectively sorted at the sorting facilities. Uh, so they all get shipped off to a separate location uh, with the other similar plastics. And yes, China uh, was taking a lot of our recyclables. Uh, they have asked for unreasonable low amounts of contamination. Uh, so we are adjusting the recycling industry within the United States and figuring out what the solutions are. Um, on average, looking for that less than 10% so that we can continue to recycle um, with the recycling facilities that we have local. You spoke to uh, mainly uh, some of the Toledo things, and I know you're Toledo, <laughs> Lucas County. Uh, Sylvania Township, we have private recycling or trash and recycling companies. Is mm -hmm. there uh, different rules and regulations with those as opposed to the Toledo system that you mentioned? Right. So in Toledo, the private contractor that we have is Republic, uh, which a lot of the townships, uh, places that are purchasing their own recycling, also use Republic. Um, waste management is very, very similar. So those are the two major haulers of trash and recycling in our area, and they are very similar. So looking at that plastic, which is the big thing that is, is different between haulers, if you're using Waste Management or Republic, it is the three and the six that you cannot recycle. But everything they else, else they will, it will be the same. Hey, first of all, you were a great speaker. You did a great job. Hey, thank you. And I've got a simple question that in Sylvania Township, at my home, our recycling container is bigger than a garbage container. But my question is, if you have a private company, do they inform us on a regular basis that our recycling is contaminated or not? I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? If there's a recycling company which picks up the container every week, but they never give us a feedback, okay, what percentage of the recycling material was contaminated. 
Sure. Sure. Do you, do you think they have a responsibility to do that? Right, so getting feedback from them as far as how Sylvania is doing is what you're looking for? Yes, yes. Yes, that, that is actually a fantastic question. It would be interesting to see more uh, how the outline areas, the, the areas around Toledo are doing with recycling. Uh, and that would, would require some auditing and some, some financial. Um, but my second suggestion is can each neighborhood Every year you give an award and call the lady or a man recycling king and queen. <laughs> <laughs> the ones with the zero contamination will be king and queen in the neighborhood. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Adam, I just have one quick question. Um, my wife and I go back and forth about this um, on whether it's recyclable or not. Okay, so. The hangers you get on your shirts, are those recyclable? They're metal hangers. They are not recyclable. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry for that. Well, I, I've got a few uh, contaminated containers out there then. Right, right. <laughs> right. But they, they are reusable, and some of those places will actually take the metal ones back. So keep that in. There, there's a happy medium. Adam, you mentioned the big part of the problem with recycling is actually user error. And I know a big piece of your job is educating the user error. Have there been studies or anything to prove that the investment in education is in fact cheaper and more effective than just investing in a process that just plans for stupid? <laughs> uh, there are a number of populations out there all of you hopefully learned a little bit of something today. You want to recycle, you just need a little bit of education on how to do that properly. And that's most of the people out there. A little bit of education helps. And we are seeing improvement. As I mentioned, a 10% reduction from 2016 to 17. We're hoping for an additional improvement uh, in the 2018 numbers. And we're planning for an additional uh, inspection here coming up in 2019. But there are populations of people out there that just, they don't care. That, that second tote is just extra room for their trash. <laughs> and so there has to be a plan for that. And then you can look at studies across the country. There are cities that will take the recycling tote, therefore removing their ability to contaminate the recycling stream. There are cities out there that are fining people if they're finding that they're consistently contaminating and not uh, doing what they're supposed to. Toledo is looking at, at multiple scenarios and they, they're making progress in a plan on which way they want to go uh, to remove that population's contaminants out of the recycling stream. So that's just a decision that they're going to have to make. Great. Guess we got it. Thanks, Adam. Thank you. Thank you. Adam, that was a great program. Thank you very much. I know I learned a lot. Uh, to show our appreciation, the Rotary Founda Toledo Rotary Foundation will make a donation in your honor to the Polio Plus Fund of Rotary International. And we have this book about the history of Toledo also to give you. Please join us next week when our speaker will be Dennis Kukuth, Toledo Fire and Rescue Museum. Immediately following today's program, we have the following meetings. Disability Services Committee in the Orleans Room. Vocational Services Committee will be meeting in the Presque Isle Room. The Marketing Committee will be offering a session on the marketing support process to other committees and interested members in the Eagle Point Room. That is open to everyone, as are all of our committee meetings. Jim and Lisa, welcome again to Toledo Rotary. And Dan and Greg, thank you for introducing our new members today. Walt, again, thank you for being our honorary chairman this year for our big event. And there he is, positioned, ready to go. Is. Past President Chuck Mann. <clears throat> on, su on Sunday afternoon, Americans will experience their annual celebration of strategy, endurance, and fierce competition as the Super Bowl commercials premiere, occasionally interrupted by a football game. Uh, just because we seem to have the time. How many people will be cheering for the Patriots? Just show of hands. And how many will be cheering for the Rams? And how many watching just for the commercials? 
<laughs> Barney Miller on MeTV. Yeah, there we go. Uh, here are a few to, to, for you to take to your Super Bowl party should you be called to one. What do you call 50, 53 millionaires watching the Super Bowl? The New England Patriots. <laughs> How do you keep the Los Angeles Rams out of your yard? Put up goalposts? <laughs> What does a New England Patriots fan and a bottle of beer have in common? They're both empty from the neck up. <laughs> it's a recycling thing, actually. <laughs> what do the LA Rams and the post office have in common? Neither will deliver on Sunday. What, what is Tom Brady's favorite letter? S. <laughs> What is the difference? We're getting close to the end. It would be applause at that point. What is the difference between the Rams and a dollar bill? You can still get four quarters out of a dollar bill. <laughs> and, and finally, uh, you look at the head table for this one. What do the Patriots fan, what, what do you call a Patriots fan holding a bottle of champagne after Super Bowl 53? Waiter. <laughs> Thank you, Chuck. Well, I hope you'll all be servants out there, as always. And like Chuck, be the inspiration as a Rotarian. We are adjourned. Have a great week.